are y'all doing? I want to welcome y'all to uh, our virtual summer reading program. I'm Miss Terry, and I'm with DeSoto Parish Library with Logansport Branch. And our theme this summer is Imagine Your Story. And we are you'll be hearing some fairy tales, folk tales, fables, mythology, and lots of other fun stories. Now, as y'all know, we're having to do this a little different this year. But uh, just bear with us, and we'll get through it, and it'll be lots of fun. So, um, y'all can watch, uh, pick up activities at all your local branches, and join in the fun at the end of our stories. So, let's get with it and have some fun. Hi, today we're doing the folk tale, The Talking Eggs, by Robert D. Sansushi. Back in the old days, there was a widow and two daughters named Rose and Blanche. They lived on a farm, and they were so poor, it looked like the tail end of bad luck. They raised a few chickens, some beans, and a little cotton to get by. Rose, the older sister, was cross and mean and didn't know beans from bird's eggs. Blanche, on the other hand, was sweet and kind and as sharp as 40 crickets. But their mother liked Rose the best because they were alike as two peas in a pod. Bad-tempered, sharp-tongued, and always putting on airs. The mother made Blanche do all the work around the place. She had to iron the clothes each morning using the old iron filled with hot coals, chop cotton in the afternoon, string the beans for supper. And while she was doing all those chores, her mama and her sister would sit side by side in rocking chairs on the shady porch, fanning themselves and talking foolishness about getting rich and moving to the city where they could go to fancy balls, wearing trail train dresses, and lots of jewels. One hot day, the mother sent Blanche to the well to fetch a bucket of water. When the girls got there, she found an old woman wrapped in a raggedy black shawl near fainting from the heat. Please, child, give me some a sip of that water, the old woman said. I'm about to die of thirst. Yes, Auntie, said Blanche as she raised her bucket and dipped out some of the clean, cool well water. Drink what you need. Thank you, child, said the old woman when she had taken a swallow, after a swallow of water. You got a sprite of do right in your soul. God is gonna bless you. And she walked away down the path that led deep into the woods. When Blanche got back to the cabin, her mother and sister hollered at her for taking so long. The water's warm. It's near boiling, shouted Rose, and she dumped it out on the porch. Here your poor sister is near dying for a drop of cool water. What took you so long? Then the two of them scolded her and hit Blanche until the frightened girl ran into the woods. She began to cry since she didn't have anywhere to go. She was scared to go home. Suddenly, around the bend came an old woman, came the same old woman, and a raggedy black shawl. And when she saw Blanche, she said kindly, what made you cry, poor child? Mama and Sister Rose led into me for something that wasn't my fault, said Blanche, rubbing tears off her cheek. Now I'm afraid to go home. Hush, child, stop your crying. You can come home with me. I'll give you supper and a clean bed, but you have to promise me that you won't laugh at anything you see. Blanche gave her word of honor that she wouldn't laugh. Then the old woman took her by the hand and led her deep into the backwoods. As they walked along a narrow path, bramble bushes, tree branches opened wide in front of them and closed up behind them. Soon, they came to the old woman's tumble-down shack. A cow with two heads, horns like corkscrews, peered over a fence at Blanche and brayed like a mule. She reckoned it was a pretty sight, but she didn't say anything. A pretty strange sight, but she didn't say anything. She didn't want to hurt the old woman's feelings. Next, she saw the yard in front of the cabin, and it was filled with chickens of every color you could imagine. Some were hopping about on one leg, some running about on three legs. Some even had four. And the chickens didn't cluck. They whistled like mockingbirds. But strange as it all was, 
blanched up by her promise and didn't laugh. Those do look kind of funny. I don't know if I could not laugh. But Blanche didn't laugh. And when they got inside the cabin, the old woman said, Light the fire, child, and cook us some supper. So Blanche fetched the kindling from the wood pile outside the back door. The old woman sat down near the fireplace, fireplace and she took her head off. What would you do if you saw her take her head off? She set it on her knees like a pumpkin. At first she combed out all her gray hair. She it, plaited it in two long braids. Blanche got pretty scared, but the woman had been nothing but kind. So she went on lighting the fire. After a bit, the old woman just put her head back on and looked herself in the mirror and said, hmm, that's much better. Then she gave Blanche an old beef bone and said, put this in the pot for supper. Now Blanche was near starving and the bone looked pretty sad, especially for two of them. But she did what the old woman said. Shall I boil it for soup, Andy? Look in that pot, child. The pan was filled with thick stew bubbling away. Next, the woman gave Blanche only one grain of rice and told her to grind it into stone mortar. Feeling mighty foolish, Blanche began to pound the grain with the heavy stone pestle. In a moment, the mortar was overflowing with rice. When they had finished supper, the old woman said, That's a fine moonshiny night, child. Come with me. So they set themselves down on the back porch steps, and after a time, dozens of rabbits. Look at all these rabbits dressed in pretty clothes. All these rabbits came out of the underbrush and formed a circle in the yard. The men rabbits had frock tail coats, and the lady rabbits had little trail train dresses. They danced standing on their hind feet, hopping about. One big rabbit played a banjo, and the old woman hummed along with it. Blanche kept time by clapping along. The rabbits did a square dance, a Virginia reel, and even a cakewalk. The girl was so happy she never wanted to leave. She sat and she clapped until she fell asleep. The old woman carried her in and put her to bed. When Blanche got up the next morning, the old woman told her, Go milk my cow. The girl did just what she was told, and the two-headed cow with the curly horns gave her a bucket of the sweetest milk she'd ever tasted, and they had it with their morning coffee. You gotta go home now, child, she said to Blanche, who was washing the breakfast dishes. But I tell you, things will be better from now on. And since you're such a good girl, I have a present for you. I want you to go to the hen house, and any egg that says take me, you go ahead and take it. But if you hear it say don't take me, then you leave it alone. When you get near home, you throw those eggs one after another over your left shoulder so that they break on the road behind you. And then you'll get a really big surprise. So when Blanche got to the little chicken house, she found all the nest filled with eggs. Half were gold, half were silver, some were covered with jewels. Half looked no different from the eggs that she got from her chickens back home. All the plain eggs told her, take me, take me. And all the fancy ones said, don't take me. She wished that she could take just one gold or silver egg or one jeweled egg, but she did what the old woman told her. And she only scooped up the plain white ones. She and the old woman waved goodbye to each other and Blanche went on her way. Part way home, she began to toss the eggs one at a time over her left shoulder. All sorts of wonderful things spilled out of those eggs. Diamonds and rubies, gold and silver coins, and pretty silk dresses and dainty satin shoes. There was even a handsome carriage that drew in, that grew in a wink from the size of a matchbox. And a fine brown and white pony that sprouted from the size of a cricket to draw it. Blanche handed all these lovely things into the cab carriage and rode the rest of the way home like a grand lady. When she got back to the cabin, her mother and sister gawked at her new finery. Where did you get all these things, her mother asked, making 
Rose helped Blanche to carry the treasures inside. That evening, the mother cooked dinner for the, for the first time since Blanche was old enough to hold a skillet. All the time, telling Blanche what a sweet daughter she was. Her mama got the girl to tell her the, about the old woman and the cabin in the woods and the talking eggs. When Blanche was asleep, the mother grabbed Rose and told her, you've got to go into the woods tomorrow morning. You find that old Amy and you tell her you want some of those talking eggs so you could have those fine dresses like your sister has. When you get back, I'll chase Blanche off and keep her things myself. And we'll go to the city and be fine ladies like we're meant to be. Can't we just run her off tonight and I don't have to go poking through the woods for some crazy old Amy? Well, there's not enough near, not enough here for two, her mother said, getting angry. You do as I say and don't be so contrary. So the next morning, Rose set out, dragged foot into the woods. She dawdled mostly and soon met the old woman in her raggedy black shawl. My sweet little sister Blanche told me that you got a really pretty house and all, said Rose. I'd appreciate to see it. You can come with me if you have a mind to, but you got to promise not to laugh at whatever you see. I swear. So the old woman led her through the bramble bushes and tree branches into the deep woods. But when they got near the cabin and Rose saw the two-headed cow that brayed like a mule and funny-looking chickens that sang like the mockingbird, she yelled, if there was ever a sight, that's one, and that's the stupidest thing in the world. And she laughed and laughed till she nearly fell down. <clears throat> said the old woman, shaking her head. Inside, Rose complained when she heard, asked, was asked to start the fire. She wound up with more smoke than flame. When the old woman gave her, gave her an old bone to put in the pot for supper, Rose said crossly, that's gonna make a mighty poor meal. She dropped it in the pot, but the old bone remained a bone. So they only had a thin soup for supper. That sad, that sad, spell, that sad speck won't hardly feed a fly. She wouldn't even lift the pestle, so they had no rice at all. Ahem, <clears throat> said the old woman. Rose went to bed hungry. All night she heard mice scratching under the floor, screech eye, owls clawing at the windows, and in the morning the old woman told her to milk the cow, so Rose did. She made fun of the two-headed creature and got a little sour milk not fit for drinking. So they had their breakfast coffee with out cream. And when the old woman lifted her head off her shoulders to brush her hair out, Rose grabbed the head and said, I'm not going to give you back your head until you give me presents like my sister got. Ah, uh, child, you're a wicked girl, but I got to have my body back, so I'll tell you what to do. You go to the chicken house and you take the eggs that say, take me, but leave the ones that say, don't take me. Then you toss those eggs over your right shoulder on your way home. To be sure the old woman wasn't played a trick on her, Rose set the old woman's head on, out on the porch while her body set, gro body set groping around the cabin. Then she ran to the chicken house. Inside all the plain eggs cried, take me, while the gold and silver and jeweled ones said, don't take me. You think I'm fool enough to listen to you and pass up the prettiest ones? Not on your life. So she grabbed all the gold and silver jeweled eggs and kept yelling, don't take me, and off she ran into the woods with them. As soon as she was out of sight in the old woman's, of the old woman's cabin, she tossed the eggs over her right shoulder as fast as she could. But out of those shells came clouds of snakes, toads, frogs, yellow jackets, and a big old gray wolf. They began to chase her like pigs after a pumpkin. Hollering bloody murder, Rose ran all the way to her mother's cabin. When the woman saw the swarm of things chasing her daughter, she tried to rescue her with a broom. But the wasp and wolf and all the other creatures wouldn't be chased off. So mother and daughter hightailed it into the woods with the animals following. And when they returned home, angry and sore and stung and coward with mud, they found Blanche had gone to the city to live like a grand lady, though she remained as kind and generous as always. For the rest of their lives, Rose and her mother tried to find strange, the strange old woman's cabin and the talking eggs, but they never could find that place again. The end.
Okay. My next one is Cinderella, Cinderella Skeleton by Robert D. Sansucci. And guess what? I didn't even realize they're by the same author. This is the first time I realized that, but that's okay. He's good. Okay. And you see they have twists on the fairy tales that we know. Cinderella Skeleton dwelt in boneyard acres near the wood. Third mausoleum on the right, decayed, decrepit, with a fright. Oh, on the door, a withered wreath invited guests to rest in peace. It was the pride of the neighborhood. Cinderella skeleton, skeleton was everything a ghoul should be. Her hair was long and lank, and her dankish hair hung down in hanks. Her nails were yellow, her teeth were green, the ghastliest haunt you've ever seen, foulest on the land, you see. Cinderella skeletons, stepsisters treated her with scorn. Grisling was small and mean, and firmly packed with spite and spleen. Tall, bony Jane, a scatterbrain, was just as vile and twice as vain. They worked Cinderella from dusk to morn. Cinderella skeleton, it seemed her tasks were never done. She hung up cobwebs every place, arranged dead flowers in a vase, littered the floor with dust and leaves, fed the bats beneath the eaves. She had no time for rest or fun. Cinderella skeletons, stepsisters dressed in fancy clothes. But she had hand-me-downs, only had hand-me-downs. The others torn in tattered gowns. Her shoes had worn out tops and soles. In fact, they were so full of holes, they showed off all her bony toes. Cinderella skeleton asked for help with household chores. But stepsister Screech began to shout, You're lucky I don't throw you out. My girls, my girls are gems, you're a common day. How dare you think that they should streak the windows or strow the floors? Cinderella skeleton, more disappointed lay ahead, disappointment lay ahead. Prince Chornell summoned one and all to his frightfully famous Halloween ball. When Cinderella begged to go, her stepmother sneered and told her, no, you'll stay at home and work instead. Cinderella skeleton watched the others leave in a hearse, screeching mournful, bombazine, her girls in the mildew green sateen. Then Cinderella made his vow. I'll get to the prince's ball somehow. I'm taking action, for better or for worse. Cinderella skeleton, off she marched without delay to the good witch in the wood beyond who cast kind spells with a generous wand. The witch heard Cinderella's plea, then nodding, saying, bring to me some things I need, and right away, Cinderella skeleton located what the witch required, a jack-o'-lantern, fiery-eyed, six rats, a trap held locked inside, two bats asleep in wings wrapped tight, and a cat as black as moonless night exactly as the witch desired. Cinderella skeleton saw the witch touch one, tip tip to all. The pumpkin turned to a funeral wagon, the rats to nightmares, part, part horse, part dragon. The bats to footmen at the ready, the cat to driver holding steady. The steeds who sped her to the ball, Cinderella skeleton, the witch exclaimed. You need new clothes. Her wand flashed magic to replace Cinderella's rags with a gown of lace, trimmed in silky ribbons and bows, while each worn shoes that showed her toes became a slipper with a satin rose. Cinderella skeleton was eager to be on her way, but the good witch said, before you go, there's one important thing to know. You must return before this morning. If you fail to heed my warning, your joy will fade at the break of day. Cinderella skeleton reached the ball and caused a stir. The guests all turned to stare at where she stood at the top of the palace stair. 
As she swept down, she heard the buzz of everyone wondering who she was. Then Prince Charnel bowed to her. Cinderella skeleton, heard Charnel say, your beauty burns like bonfire ablaze at night. Your brightness fills me with such delight. Dance with me, lady, I implored. She smiled, he led her to the floor, where they waltzed with graceful dips and turns. Cinderella skeleton, gazing into Shornell's eyes, was so in love she was unaware of each hateful murmur and baleful glare. That screech, Bony Jane and Grisling aimed at the lover's tender scene. She danced till dawn, first at the skies. Uh-oh, what happens? She didn't go home in time. Cinderella skeleton recalled too late the witch's warning. She broke from Charnel's dear embrace and hurried to escape the place. Charnel cried, you're my ancient prayer. But Cinderella fled down the stairs, distressed at how near it was to morning. Cinderella skeleton, her haste as haste will, brought mishaps, and as she ran for her waiting carriage, pursuing Prince, shouting offers of marriage, she stumbled once, giving Charnel time to grab her foot and cry, you're mine, and off came her foot with a snap. Cinderella skeleton, ignoring the thump of her footless stump, reached her coach and cried, away, I must be home by break of day. They raced pell-mell past the palace gate. The prince kept pleading, Lady, wait, in his hand, a foot in his throat alone. Cinderella skeleton, though near, near dawn, her nightmare sped. But morning caught them in mid-flight. Coach shrank to pu pumpkin in the light, and cats, rats, and bats skittered, flittered away. Ragged and limping, she faced the day. Her heart still full, for the magic had fled. Cinderella skeleton, her life grew day by day more grim. Her family worked her without rest, and they knew Prince Charnel's mystery guest. She drudged, but halfway through some chore, she dreamed she was on a dance floor. As Charnel asked her to waltz with him, Cinderella skeleton, her image filled the prince's mind. His days and nights turned to a, a blur, worrying round memories of her. So lovelorn, Charnel vowed, I'll start the search for the one who stole my heart. She must be somewhere I can find. Cinderella skeleton, until I find you, I will not rest. Vowed Charnel, who traveled every place with a slippered foot in a velvet case. But no one, Duchess, Milkmaid, Crone, could match the foot bone to ankle bone. Each snapped a foot off for the test. Cinderella skeleton looked up from Charnel when Charnel came to call, locked up when Charnel came to call. Screech pulled the girl's feet off one, two. Wine or glue, you're good as new. Wire or glue, you're good as new. Surely it's worth this slight distress for the chance to be a true princess. Now hurry, the prince is in the hall. Cinderella skeleton picked the lock with a longish pin. She heard Charnel's voice, his gentle tones, drowned by her stepsister's wails and moans. Bony Jane's ankle was too large and thick, and Grisling's thin as a withered stick. Then Cinderella came limping in. Cinderella skeleton, while everybody stared wide-eyed, she bowed to Charnel with his request. Please let me take your marriage test. Her foot bone snapped on and held fast. Charnel shouted, a match at last. Here is my promised princess bride. Cinderella skeleton, the rarest gem the world has seen. Your gleaming skull and burnished bones. Your teeth like polished kidney stones. Your dampish skills and dankish hair. There's nothing like you anywhere. You make each day a Halloween. Cinderella skeleton, 
soon was married to her prince, and they stayed happily, happy ever after, their kingdom filled with love and laughter. Screech, Grislaine, and Bony Jane just shriveled with envy and shrank to dust, and no one's seen or missed them since. The end. Okay, now we have a craft today. If you had one, if you came by the library and got one, get it out. And if you didn't get one, you can come by and get them for the next weeks. We'll have them at your local branches. We are making a bird feeder out of craft sticks. And everything is in it except the glue that you need to make it with. And on the bottom, you're going to put two popsicle sticks this away, and then you're going to line it with tin this away. And the instructions are in your uh, bag with your uh, crafts. And then you're just going to put a dot on each four corners. And then you're just going to layer your sticks. Doesn't matter what color. take your bird feeder or you can just set it on a limb or somewhere and then fill it with bird seed and watch the birds come to it and enjoy eating. Thank you.